Hello everyone, welcome back. If you are using Figma variables and trying to implement the design tokens concept in your project, so this video for you because the first issue you're gonna face is what if I try to convert this Figma variables to code so the developer can use it? Okay, so in this video, I will show you the plugin that can solve this problem and give you a correct and working code at the end, for example, like CSS. Okay, so let's start with showing you actually the wrong values sometimes you got if you face these issues so continue watching the video okay so if you try to convert your figma variables for example to a css so some plugins will give you a wrong values for example like the font family come like that and actually this one it's not working on the browser it's supposed to be like this so on the left side you can see wrong values the issues you are facing maybe and the right side the correct values okay for example, for font sizes, maybe you didn't get pixel at the end. This one is not working on the browser, okay? Supposed to be like that. And if you fix it, the problem that I need to add pixel to any number variable on Figma, you will face another issue. For example, like the font weight. If you are using a number variables to add or to control the font weight, it will become like that. 300 pixel, for example, but it's supposed to be only 300. And what if I'm using string variables for the font weight? So the value you will add on Figma, for example, would be light, medium, regular, bold, and so on. So sometimes this is not working on the browser. We need to convert it to a numbers like this, okay? What about the obesity? To make the obesity working on Figma, you have to add 50, okay? Even also, we cannot make it 50%. We just add 50 to be working on Figma. But we need it at the end to be in the browser like this, 0.5 to be working. Okay, another also example for the Boolean variable. If I need to hide and show something. So the Boolean variable value come from Figma false and true, but in the browser supposed to be none and block. So the developer can say display none and display block to show and hide any element. So let me show you actually how the plugin works and how the plugin can fix these problems and give you the correct values, okay? I have prepared for you two things. This is the Figma plugin link I will add to you inside the description. I have also prepared for you a Figma playground file. You can find it in the community and also I will put the link for this playground file in the video description. So this file already have some variables and also have some steps to guide you how to use the plugin. Okay, let me show you that file here, okay? So this is the playground file. If you open it and try to play the prototype, okay, it will show you actually step by step. Here, this is the steps and here you can play the video to can see what I'm doing, okay? So this would be a good guide for you. So now let me show you actually how this plugin works technically and what things you have to do to get the correct value at the end. Okay, if you open the variables panel here, you can see I have three collections, okay? The primitives and also areas tokens and the component specific tokens, okay? In this example, I need to only hand off the component specific tokens to the developers, okay? So I do need to hand off to them the primitives or alias tokens, okay? Okay, for all the tokens you need to hand off to the developer, that means you need to convert it to a correct CSS code. For example, at the end, you have to set the variable scope. Let me show you here. For example, this is page background color. So page background color, if you go here to check the scope, you can see it's a frame or shape. It's not text. It's not an outline. It's not a shadow, for example. Okay, this, for example, the button font color. So you can see here, for example, the scope has been set already. F same for font family. Okay, see here font family. And let's also take an example for font weight. You can see here font weight. So all the tokens you need to hand over the developer, you must set the scope. This is actually how the plugin works. If you set the correct scope, that's mean at the end you will get the correct CSS value, for example. Okay, so let me show you here for alias token. If you check anyone, you can see the scope is none. Same also for the primitives. So in this case, let's go here and try to open the plugin. You go to the plugin here and search for variables to JSON. Okay, so this is the plugin interface. Once you click here, convert variables, you can see the JSON code is here. And here actually you can see a tutorial link. Okay, to if you forgot actually how this plugin works, you can click here and see the steps and so on. Okay, so now let's download this JSON file. Okay, so it's called the variables the JSON. Okay, and let me open it and show you actually how this file looks like. Okay, so if we go here, let's open variables.json. Let me bring it here. Okay, you can see here our file contains the primitives, the alias, the light mode, and also the dark mode. 
Okay, so in this case, if you communicate with the developer, he will tell you, I need a specific variables file for light mode and another one for dark mode. So here, let me show you how you convert this JSON code to CSS. It's not only actually CSS, you can convert it to different languages in the same time. So now let's take a decision. We will convert only in the light mode. So I will delete the dark mode here. I will delete also this comma and I will select all and copy. And here you have to go to the style dictionary configurator. What is a style dictionary configurator? Style dictionary configurator is a tool that can help you to convert the JSON code to different programming language code in the same time. So once you open it, you can see here we have two platforms. Okay. So that's mean I need to generate to CSS and also JavaScript. Okay, and you can add more platforms here. So you can set here your project settings for the new platform for Lamel iOS. I need the code to be Swift UI or Objective C. I need also the code to be XML for Android. I need the code to be Dart for Flutter and so on. Okay, so what else? Here you can see the input files and this is the output files. So if you go to input files and select the JSON file, here we have to replace our JSON code. So just remove it and paste and hit run. Once you hit run, you will get an error. Later, I will explain to you why this error happened. I don't need to make this complicated for you right now, but to get the output file here, you just go to Cynix here and select or check explode parent keys. Okay. Once you do like this, you can see here we have the two files. Okay. The CSS file and also the JavaScript file. So this is our CSS. Let's copy this code and go to our text editor. Okay. And I have prepared here a file for the light mode called light.css, I will paste my code here, okay, save. So now maybe here I will close this one. Okay, let me explain to you here. Here you can see most of the values for option tokens and ls tokens are wrong, okay? So for example, this width is supposed to be here, for example, one pixel, two pixels. The spacing also same. You can see that obviously this one is not working. Why actually the ls tokens and option tokens has a wrong value? Because we didn't set the scope. And actually we have a reason behind that because we do need to hand off this two collections to the developers. So in our example, we need only to hand off the component specific tokens to the developers. So if I back again here to Figma, you can see this is a light mode and dark mode, the one I need to hand off to the developer. In your project or in your case, if you have a reason to connect some alias tokens, for example, to your component, that's mean you need to hand off to the developer. That's mean also you have to set the scope for all of these variables. Okay, so if I'm back again here, you can see most of the option tokens and alias tokens values are wrong, but this is not an issue. And you can find here, starting from the component specific tokens, you can see also here on Figma, the component specific tokens start from beige background color. Okay, starting from here, you can see all the values will be correct. So for example, this is a font family. You can see like this before it was like this. Okay, so this one is working. Same for obesity, you can see now 0 0.5. Same for font weight, whatever it's a number variables or string variables, you can see all working perfectly. Here also for the visibility, you can see instead of to have, for example, like a true or false from Figma, you can see now it's none and block to be working fine on the browser. So here in this case, you can just select the option tokens and alias tokens and just remove it like this. And now your light mode variables fine is ready to hand off to the developers. Okay, what if I need also to convert the dark mode? You just can back again to our JSON file. You remember we have removed the dark mode from here. Let's undo, okay, and let's collapse this one. And now in this case, we will remove the light mode and keep only the primitives and alias and also the dark mode. So I will copy this one. I will back again to the configurator. I will go here, select all, remove this, paste, and save or press run. Here now, your variables for the dark mode are ready. So let's back again here. I have also a different file called dark.css. I will paste this one here. Okay. You can see also, starting from here, this is option tokens and alias tokens. We will remove it. Okay. So now our dark mode variables file is ready to hand off to the developer. Okay, there is also one more thing I have prepared for you here one article on Medium so you can take a look to can understand actually how I discovered the issue and how I discovered the solution because the solution here must be something common between the style dictionary configurator and also Figma API documentation. So everything in deep details has been explained here plus also you can find the plugin link and the playground file link and also the steps to guide you step by step. That's it for today. See you again. Bye.